G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another show, the best crypto and real estate show. Today we do not have Hogan, he's off into Europe right now, but we do have Nick and today we're going to get into some news. We've seen a bit of a pump of Bitcoin, we're going to be talking about a little update for Ekta and then we're also going to be talking about a huge development with Binance. So Nick, buddy, how are you? How are you going? I'm doing well. How are you, Blake? Uh, been missing you, buddy. I'll be out there soon. I am really good, man. I've been missing you too, bro. So you're going to be in Bali very soon. Uh, everyone here, please go and like and subscribe this video. Make sure you give the thumbs up for Nick because he's coming back to Bali very, very soon. So <laughs> Nick, look, how's your weekend been, mate? What did you get up to? Oh, man, I had to help my brother move and moved into this... Uh, just enormous neighborhood and uh thankfully it was a gorgeous house so congrats to my brother nice new place but uh putting together the trampoline was just exhausting so but the kids are happy it's great to see family out here in texas um can't wait to be back in bali so i should be out there uh this weekend so look forward to getting back and uh making a whole lot of more content for you guys let's go baby that's what we like to I hear heard were, i heard you were gone all weekend too though yeah, I actually took the weekend off and uh, my friend's over here from New York. So me and her went down to Uluwatu, which is a beautiful beach cliffside area in Bali. And yeah, got to show her around. And a friend of mine also launched a new restaurant down there. So we had some pretty fun vibes the whole weekend. And uh, yeah, overall pretty good and back into Changu right now. So ready to kick on this week and lock and load for a very strong week. Speaking yeah, it's of, gonna be a, it's ahead, going to be what? It's going to be what? I was going to say, it's going to be a really exciting week. A uh, lot going on at ECTA. Can't wait to share it with everybody. So again, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Join all our social media. Uh, we're really excited to share some of this stuff with you guys, but we're really hesitant uh, to share it with you until it's actually there. and We can hand it to you. You guys can put your hands on it and uh, be as excited as we are. So just a really exciting week. I'm super pumped. We've been working super hard. I know we don't talk about Ecta much on the show, but uh, but I just can't help it this week. So, <laughs> well, let's let's get into it, man. What's what's going on in news? Any Ecta stuff uh, and worldwide? What's what's going on? Yeah, well, I wanted to touch on your weekend really quick, so I'll share my screen here. And uh, looks like Binance Australia has banned by Big Four Bank Westpac uh, in this report now. You've experienced a little bit of drama about this. Can you give us a little bit of detail? What exactly uh, did they ban? I know CZ, he's, what did he pull out of Australia or did they just screw some stuff up? What What's going on with this Binance thing in Australia? I know, you know you've got some bank accounts in Australia, so I know this is affecting you in some way. Yeah, so I use uh, two different uh, exchanges. I do it with uh, Indonesian, but then I also have Australia because I have some stuff that I still pay back in Australia. Uh, so I've always used Binance to be able to get my money into Australia um, from the from the exchange. But uh, I think it was on Thursday, uh, we got down to Uluwatu and I went to go transfer some money and convert some money in Binance. And usually from USDT to uh, AUD, you're getting about roughly about 1.5 um, in the conversion. But then it was giving me, I didn't even, I didn't even look at the conversion. I just clicked enter and submit. And then I looked at my account and they'd given me a ch exchange rate of 1.25. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? And then spoke to customer support and they were just saying, oh, make sure you do your research. And then I realized that there was something going on. And then I've seen Binance do an update on Twitter saying that they're leaving Australia. So they actually halted deposits um, on the exchange about two months ago. Uh, so no one could actually deposit any AUD. And then now they've, uh, they're saying that their third party payment system, um, so payment provider uh, is now basically that contract has come to an end. And so they're pulling out of Australia. So I went to go and just double check that conversion rate again um, on the Friday and then it was giving me one for one. So one USDT was worth one, one AUD. Uh, so now I have to change a whole bunch of things around uh, with different exchanges, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, however, yeah, I mean, every single Australian now has to 
go from uh, you know Binance into the other exchanges, which I think the next one behind Binance is CoinSpot. So they are probably going to get a big pump in, in volume, which is cool. But overall, I mean, the article you just showed was talking about how West Bank, which is a big bank in Australia, they... Uh, China, they have uh, halted anything to do with Binance so their customers can't uh, accept any uh, payments from Binance and this is because of scams. So they're blaming it on scams that lots and lots of their customers have been fallen to a scam of you know sending their money into overseas exchanges, uh, then it's coming back and they're trying to get some sort of fraud um, reward from it. So uh, that's what Westpac's been talking about. And then on top of that, yeah, Binance, I'm um, just pulling out in general. So it's it's a pretty big thing for Australia, I feel. Yeah, I feel as well. And I'm, I'm reading through the article and it says the Australian Securities and Investments Commission um, is, that's the equ equivalent of the SEC over in the US, right, Blake? Yes, this is correct. And it looks like they were kind of in talks with uh, Binance a little bit. And I'm wondering if this is kind of the same deal that happened in the US where they're just pulling out because it's you know they're going to go after the path of least resistance. If you're going to if you're going to give me this much uh, hard time about going through your um, economy, then or your ecosystem, then I'm going to go to an easier ecosystem. Um, I think this has been the narrative pretty much for all of 2023, really, with these exchanges, especially Binance being so big. Um, it looks like you know if you're going to give us pushback, fine. You know you're you're missing a lot of, and I wouldn't say it's revenue, but I. The integration with your economy or your ecosystem is necessary um, rather than this attempt to block this ecosystem from transacting with your ecosystem. We can equate this to a country not wanting to do business with another country. And, you know, that has its pros. There could be some kind of an agreement between those countries. But really, if you just say, I'm not doing business with this other country, that can really hurt you in some ways if that other economy um, is big enough or or has enough people involved in both economies, like you're, you're forcing them to choose, right? You're forcing them to choose whether they stay in a strictly Australian economy or a strictly crypto. You're not letting them, you know, marry or merge or interact with each other. And I, I feel like this could this could really burn uh, the hand, um, so to speak, rather than protecting their their economy so you know good luck i i see they did it for the right reasons but at the same time like this this regulation that they're doing i'm all for regulation but let's let's take it a step at a time maybe create some regulation and then have us follow it rather than just you know picking the low-hanging fruit over and over again so i i hope australia can get this figured out especially with binance and cz but we're going to keep seeing this path of least resistance i got another article uh about uh who be you know going to Hong Kong um, later later in the show, and this is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to have shut down somewhere else. It's going to open up in in another location that's easier and more accessible for everybody. So, just just the way things are going. All right, I'll go uh, right into we we didn't get to do our TA with Hogan today, so I'm just going to go into the Bitcoin rally that we've been having the last couple of days. We're on a three week high. Um, why is that? Everybody's asking why are we on this three week high all of a sudden? What changed? As you guys know, everybody's kind of been sitting on the edge of their seat waiting for some new news, something to chase, whether that's bad news or good news. Am I selling? Am I buying? Um, and it seems like this debt ceiling that's been going on in the U.S. economy um, has gained a lot of attention in the crypto world. And if you guys don't know what that is, that's basically uh, the U.S. government voting or agreeing on whether we can incur more debt as a um, as an, as a country. So can we can we bring on more debt? We currently owe thirty one point four trillion dollars in debt um, to various you know countries or banks or whatever that is. Um, and we're saying can we, can we owe more? And uh, and Bitcoin you know once they got that news that yes we can owe more everybody said Phew, and they went out and bought a bunch of Bitcoin. So we're seeing a really good rally right now. Uh, Bitcoin price as of this uh, recording is 27,746. And, uh, and it looks like we're up, we're doing pretty good on the day. So um, just looking, looking to see what these charts do. I think we're up 2.45% as of right now. Um, we, we were up a little higher and it looks like on the 24 hour chart, we might even go a little bit higher than that, uh, just based on some lows that we've had recently. But, uh, but the seven day chart looks good. The month chart looks like we're rebounding uh, from earlier in May. 
Um, I, I actually like this pattern. Um, I like the, uh, the resistance and the uh, support levels that we're hitting and uh, maintaining. Um, so this looks really healthy to me. Overall, in the one month, we're down 4.78%. Uh, but in the seven day, we are up 2.48%. And I'm going to go with that trend for right now as we're getting good news out of the government. And now we're just holding our breath to see what comes out of this economy uh, for the U.S., how this is going to affect interest rates and uh, and uh, the the inflation rates happening in the U.S. economy. So um, saw a nice little bump. I'll take it. And uh, we just got to watch the charts and see what happens next. So sorry to miss you this week, uh, Hogan. Can't wait to have you back for TA next week so we can uh, talk about this. Um, any comment on this Bitcoin rally, Blake? Were you able to, I mean, were you DCAing as we were dropping? Did you expect this, this rally to happen? I didn't expect us to hit these lows for very long. It looks like it lasted three weeks and now we're back, uh, back on the right track. Yeah, I mean, like when I looked at my chart, um, because I always run off a smaller time frame, but then seeing sort of where we've hit now, like we, what are we, we hit 24, 28, 400, and then we've yeah. come back down and we're down to where we are now. So, but looking at like on my like hour chart and then five minute, you know, the, around the 27, uh, what are we on? We're on 27, seven now. So about 27, five is, is a strong resistance right now. So strong support right mm -hmm. now. So, I mean, I think we're going to see that to go back up and, and try and hit that 28,400 again for sure. So I think there's quite a lot of room um, to, to move up for the next like week while this you know debt ceiling is still going to be talked about, people having yeah. you know kind of like a, a room to breathe, I would say. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think uh, for the next you know, week, we're going to see you know, some nice, nice little movements up. Now, let me give you the uh, other side of that coin, uh, what, <laughs> what this does to the U.S. economy, which could be good for Bitcoin, because as the U.S. economy fails, which, you know, has all of its cons uh, for everybody involved, um, it does do good for the crypto industry as a whole. It seems when um, it seems that they're using Bitcoin as a hedge against the U.S. dollar. So um, we'll see how that plays out. But two things happened here. So this debt limit is actually a suspension. They didn't raise the debt ceiling. They put a suspension on the debt ceiling. And I think this tweet from uh, Meta Lawman actually says it best. It appears that the debt limit is not being increased. It is being suspended. Now, so there will be no limit on how much more debt the U.S. can incur over the next two years. This goes through January 2025. Um, no explanation given on how new debt limit will spring into existence in two years. So January 2025, how are we going to magically have this debt ceiling? Um, and of course, BTC is rallying on the news. So that out of uh, Meta Lawman on Twitter, that's his comment on the thing. And I feel exactly the same. I feel like we're kicking the can down the road again as the U.S. economy. Um, that you know, I'm I'm torn, right? I'm in the U.S. right now. I'm in the U.S. economy, and then Bitcoin rallies as the U.S. economy fails. So I guess I'm in I'm in a really good spot, right? I'm involved in both economies. If one does good, I, I just kind of go back and forth. And I think a lot of people are doing that. And as we see bad news in one, we see good news in the other, and it, and it just goes back and forth. So uh, we're going to see this arbitrage happen in, until these two can figure out how to play nice together. Uh, but uh, another thing going on with the debt ceiling negotiations, uh, this deal is to will now avoid the U.S. debt default. Um, Nix's proposed 30 percent mining tax, says Ohio lawmaker. Now, this is only coming as a quote from this Ohio lawmaker. This is only because he was privy to some of the um, papers that are going around about the agreement that was made about the debt ceiling over the weekend. Um, but basically, there was a proposed 30 percent crypto mining tax that was going to be increased 10 percent per annum for the next three years. And it looks like and I won't know until the, the papers are public, but it looks like the Republicans went in and said that they don't want that as part of the deal for this debt ceiling. Um, they stuck to their guns and it was taken out. So at first glance, it looks like this 30 percent uh, tax on electricity used by cryptocurrency miners. Um, is not part of the deal right now. So that's actually good news. The bad news is, is that there's no limit on how much debt that the uh, U.S. can incur for the next two years. So what that means for the crypto economy, um, that could mean good or bad. We, we really will have to wait and see. Um, they're supposed to have this deal in paper 
um, approved by Congress by the 31st midnight U.S. time. So they've they've got a clock ticking. They've only got, uh, what is it, not even 48 hours to get this thing done um, before uh, we owe some money to pay off some of our debts. So this could actually uh, be a really good thing. Um, but at the, and it's already a good thing for the crypto mining tax, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. We've got about another week of holding our breath to see what the U.S. economy does with this information. Isn't it interesting? So, I wonder, sorry. let's say next year, right, we understand how the halving works of Bitcoin. And we know that mid next year is when we're going to really see like the, the proper bull market come in um, based on the historical data you know, of the halving. And then we know that like when you look at historical data, roughly around your December, like end of December, mid-January, that's when like everything stops and then we start seeing the bear market kick in and everything radically drops. It'd be interesting to see how much more the, you know, that debt ceiling on the, on the was it January something, 20, um, 2025? Yeah. For this. So how all that plays into it as well of how far and how fast the bear market kicks in um, after we have you know hit the hit the all time highs uh, for Bitcoin and the rest of the market. So I'm uh, I'm kind of excited to to see how that goes and can't wait to short. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a, not a bad time. Uh, we've got that. I think it was what March 18th we marked our calendars for. Um, when we had the whole SVB uh, debacle earlier this year, mm -hmm. and they they put off a bunch of um, debt that they that they needed to pay back, or they extended a, a lot of debt into these banks uh, for one year exactly, and uh, and that's I think March 18th is what we marked our calendars for. So we've got that date in 2024, and now we've got January 2025 that we really need to keep our our ear to the ground and uh, listen for the train coming to see you know is this going to be huge for crypto. Uh, or is this going to end the bull run? Like, where is this going to take us when that happens? So very interested to see U.S. economy, again, in my opinion, screwing things up again, kicking the can down the road and not making any kind of long term uh, fix or even short term fix. I think this is a micro fix. This is a Band-Aid on a huge gaping wound. Um, and I, I don't know how they're going to climb out of this without making some huge moves the only move i can see and we'll find out in the first or second week of june is them increasing the um, fed interest rates um, they're thinking that doing another hard push might finally slow this inflation down i can see them making a last ditch effort to kind of go big or go home and uh, and increase it a lot to see if they can spur some momentum in uh installing that that inflation um as as it does not slow down despite how much they've increased the interest rates over the last year. So we'll see how this plays out. We got to hold our breath for another week or two as we get into June um, and just see how this plays out. Unfortunately, we are coupled with that U.S. dollar and that U.S. economy and the stock market. And it seems like everything that the SEC does or the Fed does, it seems like affects crypto in some way. So unfortunately, we do have to hold our breath for that. Um, Bitcoin, it, not financial advice is always a great hedge against the U.S. dollar, um, but we'll just see. We'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. So, Nick, just for the folks at home, uh, who exactly is America indebted to? Uh, where, where are they actually getting all these loans and all this money from? Is it all the way <laughs> back in like the 1900s? You know, when they first got that first uh, big loan from J.P. Morgan, or is it like trickling a bunch of different things? So we uh, we will owe money to just about anybody. That is <laughs> that is uh, kind of our mo. So if you'll lend it to us, we'll take it. But a lot of this comes from trade uh, agreements, right? So um, we we incur a lot of debt through trade agreements or through deals, um, through commodities that other countries own that we want a part of. Um, and, and it's good to owe somebody, uh, to have somebody like the U.S. owing you, right? It'd be good if your billionaire friend owes you some money. I'd rather my billionaire friend owe me some money than my really poor friend owe me some money. Um, that's just a good position to be in. So just about anybody will extend us a loan. If we missed our payments on June 1st, um, that would have ruined our credit rating as a country. Um, believe it or not, there is a credit rating for countries. Um, and so we were really urgently trying to get this done so we could get more uh, debt given to us. But I, I believe at this point, and I can look it up, I believe China is actually holding the bag on uh, who we owe 
the most money to as uh, as a U.S. economy. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, awesome. Thanks for that uh, information. What's, so, uh, honest what's and, next now? Yeah, on to some good news. I only got two two pieces left, and on to some good news is we talked about last week how uh, Hubi, um, the the exchange, uh, got kind of kicked out of uh, Singapore right last week, and it was kind of a sudden move. But we knew that Hubi had. Uh, filed for an exchange there in Hong Kong, and it looks like as of the 29th, they are able to offer crypto trading in Hong Kong to retail and institutional clients. Now, this is a first step. You can't offer any spot trading or any trading whatsoever in Hong Kong until you apply for this uh, uh, with the Hong Kong Security and Futures Commissions. Um, you need to file an application, and they have done that on the 29th, and they've made that public, and now they can officially start uh, offering some spot trading to retail and institutional clients. This is just a first step. And the reason I'm pointing this out is last week we had pointed out that they kind of been kicked out of Singapore and that they were planning on it. And that move has already been made. So this goes right into that narrative about Binance in Australia, Binance leaving the U.S. Um, and, and really China picking up the ball and saying there is a whole that needs to be filled and we are willing to do it. So we're going to see these exchanges trickle into Hong Kong, and we're going to see China possibly leading the bull market um, for another time uh, when they get involved into um, more legal crypto trading. So they've been involved in crypto since the beginning. It's been banned. It's been allowed. It's been regulated a little bit, but it looks like now they're they're ready to move forward because they can see this hole that needs to be filled um, in all economies, both onboarding, offboarding, exchanges, um, and just supporting everything from NFTs to uh, meme coins. So we'll see how far they take it, but it looks like this could be a really good move, not just for China, uh, but for crypto as a whole, uh, opening these gates in, in China with such a huge economy and such a huge, you know, they got a lot of people there in China. So it'd be great to, to get them fluid into the crypto uh, industry without having to be so secretive about it. So looking forward to that. That's really great news. Um, any any comments on that? Do you even trade on uh hubi at all Blake? no i don't trade on it but it's exactly what we said yesterday um last week it's they were just moving around not a big deal uh you know a headline mm-hmm. is a headline so but yeah they just moving around that's all that's all i have to say about it all right now this one this one plays a little close to home uh tourists are unhappy with the crypto payments ban in bali and then this headline is dealt with firmly Bali governor issues warning to tourists using crypto. Now, this comes out of a press conference that just happened over the weekend. Uh, It looks like it was on the 28th. And um, a government-owned news agency actually came out with this uh, quote from from the governor uh, issuing warnings to people that are using cryptocurrency to pay for goods and services on the island of Bali. Um, He warned that the Indonesian rupiah is the only legal currency that can be used for payments in the country um, and that there is a potential sentence of one year in prison and a fine of 200 million rupiah which is about 13,000 usd um, for violations in this and you could be deported you could actually be put in jail so what does this actually mean and we can do a deep dive into this later um, but let me just start up. This is all hype. This is a bunch of just headline grabbing again. It looks like bad news is always making headlines. Um, am I worried about it? Am I worried going to Bali and being a crypto trader? Absolutely not. I'm going to ask you point blank, Blake, is, is crypto trading illegal in Indonesia? I mean, me, me and Berwin have been to so many conferences uh, about crypto and as far as we know it, they're, they're calling it a, a commodity. So it's not actually legal here. It's not actually illegal here. I mean, everybody uses it here. Uh, I mean, Indonesia itself is the third largest, I think, wallet holders um, and volume in the entire world. So adding that into Bali, I don't, you and me, you and me know this, Nick, that there's, you know, there's a number of companies here that, you know, support crypto payments. So... I, it always it always comes down to this type of news that the governor always says something. Uh, like, for example, when they said that they were going to ban tourists being able to rent scooters. Um, that was that didn't go through at all. Uh, when they talked about uh, you know the religious uh, religious um, 
uh, law of not being able to be, you know, sleep in the same room as, as another, you know, as your opposite gender. Yeah. Um, that was very specific on something else. And, you know, they always run it out in Bali and then all the news outlets always talk about, oh, Bali's, you know, going to be dead for tourists and trying to create all this general hype. Um, the same thing here is happening now. Bali is has one has way too many it's a tourist destination so the crypto payments are going to be needed uh, but at the same time the rest of indonesia is backing cryptocurrency and calling it commodity in general so i don't believe that this is going to hold any weight i don't actually believe that the context in this is actually generically true and yeah i mean we know what the yeah. <clears throat> what the market is like here so yeah i don't i don't agree on that's actually gonna come to any fruition yeah Share, share my screen again real quick, Ricky, and I will just point out the very first line in, in this article. <laughs> Cryptocurrency trading is legal in Indonesia. So this has to do with crypto for payments carries penalties, including jail time. Now, this uh, honestly, this is healthy. They, they, they're trying to not let people circumvent their economy, not pay taxes, not report income, things like that. And I also want to point out here later in, in the article, it, it shows despite the hardline stance from Bali's governor and Indonesia, the country is on the path to rolling out a national crypto exchange by next month. Now, this has actually been going on for quite some time. It was supposed to be ready by the end of 2022. Um, they had some operational delays, but uh, but it's going to be open by next month. And in fact, Indonesia's Ministry of Trade would reportedly act as a custodian and clearinghouse for the for the local cryptocurrency markets. The platform, like I said, was originally meant to be operational by end of 2022, but suffered. So they've always planned on dealing with cryptocurrency. I want to point out why this grab some headlines real quick. We had some Bali tourists that said, I'm not going back to Bali because they can't accept my crypto payments anymore. And I want to point this out, like even in this article, they found 36 businesses in all of Bali that accept crypto. And they're mainly in Ubud. I mean, I'm we're, we're in Changu and to find an actual place where I can go in and pay with cryptocurrency, that's actually few and far between, especially in Bali in a developing country. You know, I might be able to find a Starbucks in uh, in El Salvador or something that can take my Bitcoin. But to find that as commonplace in Bali is not very typical. Usually for me, I go through an exchange, I turn it into IDR and I pay just like everybody else um, because we're just not to, at that stage in crypto. And I think a lot of economies aren't set up for that infrastructure yet to be able to track uh, that money because we do need to know how much our our um, individuals are making in our economy, right? We need to know how much everybody is making so we know how much our economy is holding, how much revenue is floating around this place, right? So I can understand there, there being some desperation to get some regulation around it. But I mean, how many people are going to stop going to Bali because these 36 businesses can't take their crypto payment? Really? I mean, they're going to open a national crypto exchange. I, I use three different exchanges while I'm in Bali to turn my money into physical cash, uh, whether that's IDR or USD. So I I don't see this slowing down any tourism. I'm not going to hotels and paying for my rooms there in crypto. Um, so And I don't see everybody else doing it that way as, as well. So I don't see this doing anything to the tourist um, uh uh, income or the, the I think Bali gets 28% of its revenue from uh, tourists. And I don't see that dwindling at all just because they took crypto off the table for payments for goods and services. So uh, that's it. That's all I had for today. Um, I did have one other thing I wanted to bring up uh, personally, if you uh, if you don't mind, Blake, unless go you had it. anything else about Bali. No, nah, no, nah, let's go for it. Uh, well, real quick, in uh, other news, ECTA, the layer one blockchain, has actually decided to do its first official burn um, on its layer one blockchain, burning ECTA tokens. Um, and I know for a fact they're burning over 10 million uh, ECTA for their first burn. This is their first burn. There will be more burns going forward. Um, and this is just giving an example on how a deflationary system works. An inflationary system is just like the U.S. where now they can, you know, turn on the money printer and have as much debt as they want. Um, where here in crypto, most are deflationary systems, except for Dogecoin, um, where the, there's a finite amount of tokens. And a lot of those can be eliminated 
um, by the owner of the tokens, whether, you know, just like if you were to burn a pile of money here in the corner of your house, uh, we can burn tokens and send them to an address that they cannot be retrieved from. Um, and that is happening today to uh, stay true to that deflationary system. Um, and they're burning over 10 million tokens. So stay tuned to our uh, social media for EctaChain, and you guys will see how many tokens were exactly burned. Um, but that is happening uh, today um, in Bali time. I think by the time that this actually airs, it will have already happened. So if you guys missed it, sorry to hear, but, uh, but there will be more burns going forward. So that's pretty big news there in Indonesia as well. Um, but I did want to pose a question to our uh, viewers really quick. I was actually contemplating starting my own content channel uh, for Nick Box and just giving you my opinion on some things that aren't always involved in ECTA. So if you guys drop in the comments and see if that's a good idea, would any of you guys that listen to this channel even come check me out? Um, it just gives me a little more freedom of speech and I can say what I want and I don't have to be worried about my boss looking over my shoulder. This show is ran by ECTA, so... Just a little uh, little poll for the community. See if uh, if Nick should come out, NFT Nick or uh, Nick Boggs come out with his own content channel and just add more value to the uh, Ecta ecosphere. So just wanted to put that out there. Leave it in the comments. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. And uh, that's all I got for today. I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. You definitely should do it, bro, because you got so much uh, value to be able to give and yeah, then you can go really and go full on rants onto banking and, and how crypto works. <laughs> and really, yeah, and really... I get that side eye from you guys when I go on for 20 minutes about <laughs> one subject. <laughs> <laughs> it's groovy. It's perfect. Um, okay, cool. And then we can have you on. Then we can like like push you and push um, your channel as well from here. So that's perfect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, bro. Well, um, that's been a pretty damn good show today. Uh, lots of news happening and definitely the burn for Ector is going to be absolutely insane. So we can't wait for more burns to be happening um, in the future. But uh, anything else you want to leave us with, Nick? Uh, no, just really excited to get back. Really excited for this week. Can't wait to share everything with you guys. Make sure you go to ecta.io, sign up for the newsletter there. And if you're even curious about real estate, even in the slightest, go over to ectorealestate.app and sign up for the newsletters there so you don't miss anything about our revolutionary uh, new real estate platform where you can uh, uh, trade or buy and sell real estate on an app with uh, just a couple clicks on a button. So click, click, buy, click, click, sell. It's going to change the industry. So really looking forward to all this stuff and sharing it with my uh, Ecta fam. Awesome. Thanks for that, Nick. And thanks to everyone that's watching. Again, go and like and subscribe to our channel and like this video. Comment below if you agree that Nick should go and create his own channel and start sharing his own content. And again, yes, look out for the burn and look out for the Active Real Estate app. And we'll see you guys in the next video.